Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm doing a quick uh, comparison of Android 4.1 against Android 4.2. The tablet with the um, Tornado is Android 4.1, and the tablet with the Nice Beach is Android 4.2. Both of them are Nexus 7, and they're both running the official Android uh, versions from Google. There's been no alterations or modifications on either tablet. So the first thing you notice is that the lock screen looks pretty similar, but some very small changes uh, at first glance. But when I get into the features, uh, you'll notice that there's a big difference. The first thing on Android 4.1, you can only unlock to Google Now or unlocking the device itself. That's it. Nothing else is interactive. Um, on Android 4.2, however, you can select different user profiles, which I'll get into very shortly. The unlock widget only unlocks the device. Google Now is accessed from the bottom circular icon here. Then you swipe out. Uh, you now have the option to add additional widgets on your lock screen. Long pressing and remove obviously removes it. If you go back over, you can add more. I assume that when Android app developers update their API, they can include their widgets over here as well. So for now, we'll simply tap on calendar and it's added back. Simple as that. And you can keep adding more and more and more. However, there is a con. Uh, you cannot you cannot change the background wallpaper, you cannot customize the size of the widget, and you cannot have more than one widget per a screen. So um, I highly recommend you check out an app called Widget Locker, which I'll put in the description below. That app actually allows you to do all the stuff that's missing, th that I just mentioned. And of course, uh, if you simply tap on a widget, then unlock the device, you can access the widget's settings. Okay. Uh, so the UI looks exactly the same once you un unlock the device, however, notifications bar on the original, uh, uh, sorry, on Android 4.1, the notifications uh, drop down bar is quite long. On Android 4.2, if you swipe down the top left, you have your regular notifications bar, which is a lot shorter, and if you swipe down the top right, you have your new quick settings menu. You can access your user profiles, adjust the brightness, your core system settings. Wi-Fi networks, you can turn auto-rotate on and off. Your battery percentage and tapping on it gives you more battery information. You can turn airplane mode on and off and Bluetooth on and off. Okay, so the keyboard, they're identical in terms of look and they both allow for typing. Uh, if you go on Android 4.1, if you try to glide around, nothing happens. On Android 4.2, however, I'll glide. So I'll type uh, babbling boolean. As you can see, I never actually let go of the, the keyboard once, it, un, except when I had to type in a, a separate word. Um, now Google has added a swipe feature built in, so simply gliding over the letters allows you to type. And believe me, it's a much, much faster way of typing than regular, a uh, traditional method of tapping the keys. Uh, if you go into the system settings, under storage. Okay, you'll notice that the Android 4.2 has a longer list, and uh, that's because there's a new thing called cache data. Simply tapping on cache data will allow you to delete all cache data on the device. Before Android 4.2, the only way you could achieve this is by rooting your device and then downloading a third-party app. This time it's built right into the Android core system, so it's a great feature if you're running, like, say, an 8 gigabyte version of the Nexus uh, 4 and you're low on memory, just clear your cache data. Uh, there's a lot of false information on the internet going around that uh, Google Now has been updated on Android 4.2. That's actually not the case. Um, Google Now was updated when Android 4.2 released. However, if you're running an Android 4.1 device, you can run the exact same version of Google Now as Android 4.2. All you have to do is go to Google Play, update your Google Search app, and that's it. They run the exact same version of Google Now. So if you read anywhere else otherwise, believe me, it's false information. You can run the exact same version of Google Now on both. Just update the app. Simple as that. So I'm not going to demonstrate Google Now because there are no differences. Okay, so another thing I'll show you is this new screensaver feature. Go to system settings again. Display. You'll notice that the, the uh, list is quite limited. Whereas on uh, Android 4.2, it's slightly longer. Now there is this new feature called Miracast in which you, if you, you can stream whatever's being displayed on your Android device straight to your TV over a Wi-Fi network or say if you have a USB player. However, even though Google has added that in Android 4.2, it's not available on all devices and nobody knows why. Um, I believe it'll be available on the Nexus 4, but I believe it's missing on the Nexus 10. And even this Nexus 7, which is running Android 4.2, it's missing. So 
I'm not sure what Google, why they didn't include that. It's very simple, easy technology. It's just a software update, but they didn't do it. So uh, yeah, who knows what they were thinking with that. But anyway, back to the Daydream feature. Daydream is the uh, screensaver feature. So if you simply have, you can choose it to turn on when your device is docked, charging, or both. And if you can, you can just simply preview it. So let's do the clock. Okay, you get the clock. Uh, let's get into something a bit more detailed. So Google Currents has its own daydream feature. Press start now. I assume that Android app developers will be able to update their apps so they can have theirs uh, show up in the daydream selection. So let's say uh, I want to tap on this tree article. You'll notice that the Google Currents daydream feature is actually interactive. It gives you a nice beautiful picture from the article. Uh, just a little header and of course if you simply tap on open in Google Currents, it'll open the Google Currents app with that specific news article. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the most popular feature from Android 4.2, but hey, it's a nice little feature to add in, right? Now, uh, the Android 4.2 camera, I cannot demonstrate that in this video because these are both Nexus 7 devices. They do not come with uh, the camera app built in. However, I do have a video of the Android 4.2 camera app and the new gallery app. The gallery app allows for built-in photo editing right in the gallery. And the Android 4.2 camera is pretty awesome. It allows you to take street view photos uh, so you can take pictures above you, below you, etc. Uh, I'll put a link to that video in an annotation when this video finishes or you can just expand the dis video description below and hit the link directly to that video. I go into very extensive detail of the Android 4.2 camera and gallery app. Okay, so Android 4.1 does not have profiles. Android 4.2, however, does. So this is the owner's current profile. I made an account called Test. Simply tapping on it changes the interface. You'll notice that the apps listing is different. Uh, the bottom widgets are different. The layout is different completely. So what happens is, uh, on the owner's account, uh, they had Temple Run installed. So what I'll just do is, actually, it'd be easier if I just showed you from here. Uh, what I what they had is uh, they had Temple Run installed on the owner's profile, and what I did on the dummy account was go to Google Play and install Temple Run. However, it didn't actually download it. Once I pressed install, it instantly said your app is ready to use. I assume what it did is it took the Temple Run data from the owner's account and transferred it over to the test account. Because the app already exists on the, the hard drive of the tablet, it just kind of grabbed the information and put it on both accounts. However, the cool thing here is that stats and scores are kept separate per an account. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that for you right now. So this is the, this is the test account. The stats and score is 60 coins, right? If you go over to the or owner's account, okay, so on the owner's account, you'll notice that they have 223 coins. So what what the profiles basically does is not only customize your system settings, your uh, your interface, the way you, you laid everything out, but it also remembers your scores for apps. It, it doesn't let them collide with one another. You can keep your, your uh, game app scores separate. You can keep your, say, Google Plus settings separate. Everything is separate. It's, it's really awesome. So those are the differences between Android 4.1 and 4.2. They're not massively different, uh, but I believe the profile settings and the Android camera uh, are the biggest changes and they're actually pretty awesome. So if you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.